Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man's going to be a part of UFC 232, the end of the year pay-per-view, the big ticket, Walt Harris. Walt, man, as always, I appreciate the time. Uh, another matchup here on, um, you know, potentially the biggest, uh, one of the biggest fight cards of the year. Andre Arlovsky is the opponent. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw an Andre Arlovsky fight? Man, oh, God, it was a long, long time ago. Um, he had the big beard. I'm trying to think of who he fought. Maybe it was Cabbage Correa. Um, and I was just like, damn, this dude's a beast. You know what I mean? Like, he was amazing, you know. Um, that was, like, well before I was even fighting. So it was pretty cool to to get a matchup with him, you know, being that I followed his career. You know, obviously you've now been doing this for some time, pro debut back in uh, May of 2011, an 18-second TKO. Uh, what, do you, what do you remember about your pro debut? Is there something that sticks out to you? Yeah, man, I was scared to death. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember uh, it was just scared, man. I was just like, why am I doing this? You know, like what <laughs> what possessed me to want to do this? But it ended up working out in my favor, and uh, the rest is history, man. You know, I, I've talked to football players who've made that transition. Eric Anders, a guy that obviously you're very familiar with about the, mm-hmm. the traits that you bring from the football field to the MMA cage. Being a college basketball player, what do you think is the biggest trait that you were able to bring from bas- the basketball court to the MMA cage? Sweet feet, man. Uh, you know, the agility, um, the speed, and the footwork. I think that translated perfectly from basketball over to MMA, for me at least. Um, you know, it just helped me pick up the footwork and striking and, and boxing and different things like that uh, at a faster rate. And, um, you know, just the anaerobic part of it, the the, the – the sprint, the, the quick burst, you know, that, that all played a factor in fighting. So I think it, it helped me out tremendously for sure. Do you ever get a phone call for one of your former teammates that just they, – they learn that all of a sudden you're an MMA fighter and they just can't believe it? Yeah, it's like all the time, man. I, everybody I talk to, they're like, yo, what? Like, because I was voted like class clown in high school. So, like, you know, like nobody would have predicted, you know, 12, 15 years later I'm fighting in the UFC. So um, it's just one of those things, man, that just kind of – I, I gravitated to and anything I do, I try to do the best of my ability. So it kind of landed me in the UFC is a blessing, you know, to be a part of it. And, you know, we'll keep pushing, see where it goes. When you were in high school, was there a dream job? Yeah, man, of course. The first dream job was NBA. And um, the second was to be a lawyer. And I just got to the point. Um, I mean, the dream, the NBA dream was very close to coming true. Um, I just hit a snag toward the end, you know, and I just kind of got to a point where I just gave up on athletics because it was just, it was tough, man. It was like doing something your whole life and then it kind of just not being able to do it anymore. It was tough. And um, I kind of had my kid, I had my son, um, and it was just, you know, two years of doing nothing, man, just hanging out, gained a bunch of weight. And then I kind of found MMA and the rest is history, man. And for a lot of MMA fans, the introduction to yourself was 2013 when you made that UFC debut. What what would you say is the differences between yourself uh, now and then as opposed to kind of how you look at the game? Oh, man. I mean, me, then I was one-dimensional. I was a striker, and that was it. Um, Now I think I'm a complete fighter. I can grapple. I can wrestle. um, I have submissions. Unfortunately, you don't get to see a lot of those in fights (laughs) because the fights end faster, but... Um, I do practice and work on those skills a lot. I spend a lot of time wrestling and, and doing things that I know my opponents are going to try to exploit. Um, so, um, you know, in my view of the game, um, it, it's it's a fight. You know, when I first came to UFC, it was just it, – everything was magnified, man. It was just like, wow, you know, you see cameras. You're seeing all these guys that you watched and saw on TV. It was just like, holy crap, like this is real. Now it's like – I'm one of those guys, you know what I mean? It's like, I know all the guys. I know everybody in the company. I'm like, hey, man, hey, I'm back. Hey, how y'all doing? You know, we laugh, we joke, we cut up. And a lot of these people I keep in contact with when I'm not fighting. So it's just like, you know, we pick up where we left off, and it's my job. You know, now it's not so much of a a moment. It's more about going in and doing what I need to do. In terms of Arlovsky, what do you think are the, the big similarities and differences between your game and his game? Similarities, I mean, we like to strike. You know, we, 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 we like to stand and bang. Um, the differences is I think I'm way more athletic. I think I'm way faster. 
And I think I have more tools to bring to the shed, to, to the to the fight than, you know, I think he's at a point now in his career where, you know, he hasn't evolved much. He's still kind of the same guy, you know, but I'm evolving constantly. And I think that's the difference. And that's what's going to win me the fight. I'm sure you've probably watched this fight against uh, Tuavasa, you know, from earlier this year. I mean, was there anything that stuck out to you about how he fought that fight? No, I mean, he just, I don't know, man. Just I just saw the same guy, you know. I, I didn't see, nothing really st- stuck out or impressed me about the fight at all, honestly. Um, you know, like I said, I, I I think I present a challenge to guys in the, uh, in the division that, you can't mimic me. You can't find a guy in the gym that can mimic me. So, uh, sorry, my Charles Rosa was just calling me. Uh, but um, like, like I said, I, I don't think you can mimic me in in the gym. You can try, but once you get in the cage with me, you realize, damn, this dude's big and fast and athletic. Like he's not standing still. He's not just a big heavyweight that lumbers forward. He does things like a smaller guy, a guy twice, you know, as small as him. So, um, you know, I don't think he's gonna be able to. To, to deal with what I'm bringing to the table, honestly. Yeah, and of course, you're coming off that win or earlier this year against Daniel Spitz. I mean, as you think, I mean, you've been in the UFC now for a long time. I mean, where, where do you, in terms of where you believe, you know, kind of where you can go? I mean, if, if you know, 10 is, you know, top of the line, you know, and we're talking about a scale of one to five, where do you think you are kind of in showing your, your full potential as a mixed martial artist? I don't think I've even scratched the surface, and that's the scary part. Um, I think I have so much more to offer uh, to the fans. You know, like, I think they see me and they see my fights, and they're like, okay, this guy's got, like, 12 finishes, all KOs. Like, people aren't making it out of the first round, and they don't realize that I have grappling. You know, like, I, I really pride myself on growing that part of my game. And, you know... I just haven't been put in a position to where I've had to use it, you know, but I'm prepared to. And I think that's going to shock a lot of people. I think that's going to bring a lot of uh, open, a lot of eyes. I think they're going to be like, whoa, this dude's like not just he's not just standing and not trying to knock people out like he can do everything. So um, I'm excited to show that off. man. I really am. You know, they always talk about perceptions versus realities. I mean, do you kind of feel like, you know, people, the perception is, hey, Walt is just a. Uh, a stand-up guy, you know, if yeah. you go to the ground, you know, is that kind of the biggest thing that you think people take away from you? Yeah, I think that is. I think of the perception of me as, oh, he can't grapple, you know, and that, that fuels my fire in the gym every day to, 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 to prove people wrong, you know what I mean? I think that the Fabricio fight, I got kind of caught in a bad situation where I just didn't train a lick of grappling for three months. I did striking for literally three months. I don't think I grappled. I probably grappled twice that whole camp just because I knew I was facing uh, a guy who was going to stand up and bang with me. But um, I did prepare to take him down. You know, I didn't prepare to be taken down. I got caught in between, which is a, is a part of my fault. Um, you know, um, a lot of it had to do with my old gym. I changed gyms. Um, I wasn't getting what I needed at that gym. So I got caught in the middle of that kind of, okay, we're doing this one thing and this one thing only. And that's why I didn't shine like I wanted to against Fabricio. I had no hesitation taking that fight. Um, I think, but I think that's kind of where people see, they're like, oh, okay. He, when he lose, when he lost his fights, he was taken down, you know, and he did, you know, they feel like that's where you can beat me, but they're sorely mistaken. You know, that the Fabrizio is the best to ever do it. So, you know, like grappling with him and grappling with most guys is like two different, it's a night and day difference. But, um, you know, I just think I have a lot more to show and I have a lot, a lot of things that the fans are going to really, really be impressed with. In terms of the biggest regrets you have in your career, that that three months of not grappling, is that one of your biggest regrets? Oh, for sure, bro. Like, that's why I changed gyms, because I realized at that point I was like, I don't give a shit if I trained striking for three years. I still should have been prepared to go in there and deal with Fabricio. And I wasn't. You know, I was prepared mentally, physically, but skill-wise, I didn't – I wasn't ready to go in there and, you know – I knew what to do, but I just I should have had that going consistently in the background, and it just wasn't there. And that's that's what kind of you know prompted my hand to, to make the move that I did. So, in terms of this fight, is there anything you want to prove to yourself? You know, in terms of you know at UFC two thirty two. Yeah, I want to I want to prove to myself that I can start with the big dogs. You know what I mean? And um, I I know I can. You know, it's just about going in there and going through the motions now. You know, in my head, in my mind, 
the way I work and, and what I know I'm capable of, I already know I belong in the top 10. I know I belong to be challenging for a title. I just have to go and do the hard work now, which is getting in the cage and, and, and showing it. And I think December 29th, man, that people are going to be pleasantly surprised. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm watching the Bama game. I, I've, uh, got, I've got it on in the other room. I, I can hear it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he almost scored. Oh, my God. But, I mean, I mean, UFC, uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to ask you for your pick. So, we, we Jones and Gustafsson. It, Jones. It, you know. I'm going to give you my pick, Jones. <laughs> that's my dog. Like, that's the dude's unbelievable. Like, I, it's going to be a great fight. Don't get me wrong. I love Ale- Alexander Gustin, But I just don't ever bet against John, man. Mm-hmm. And I, I just feel like he has that. He knows. He knows what to do to win. Like, it's just you can't pick against him, man. He finds a way all the time. And he's at a point now, I think, in his career, it's more imperative to prove that he belongs back where he's supposed to be than anything. And I think he's training like that. So is he one of those guys you, you look at and you're just amazed with the, the, the things he's able to pull off inside the cage. Oh, for sure. Like I try to, I steal stuff from him all the time. I told him, I'm like, bro, you got to keep posting videos. Cause I'm over here swagger jacking everything you do. I, I, I see it and I go to the gym and I try it and I swear. And, uh, you know, we, we had a good laugh about that. He's like, look, you know, he was joking about, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember, but there was rumors of him coming to heavyweight. And uh, yeah. I told him, I said, look, bro, you come to heavyweight, I'm going to a five. I'm just going to tell you right now. He's like, nah, I'm not coming up there to fool around with your big tail. I'm like, look, I don't you can say all that all you want, but the minute I hear you sign the heavyweight, I'm cutting weight and I'm going to a five. You know, but I just think he's just, he's gifted, man. And he just, his view of the game and the way he sees the fight in the fight, it's almost like Floyd Mayweather, you know what I mean? Like, they can process what's happening at light speed, and they can make adjustments at light speed, and that's what sets him apart. You know, I think he just presents so many different problems for so many different guys in that division that, you know, he will, he's going to rain until he's done done raining. He's tired of raining, you know what I mean? And, of course, uh, your fight here against Andre Orlovsky. UFC 232, Walt, as always, I appreciate time. Let everyone know they can follow you out on social media and those sponsors that help support you. Oh, man, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at the Big Ticket 205 on Facebook at Walt Big Ticket Harris. Um, I want to give a shout-out to Bluebird Botanicals, uh, CBDs, for keeping me feeling good and healthy and training hard. Um, I want to thank Jason and Iridium Sports, Ed Cap everybody over there for helping me and, uh, you know, believing in me. I want to thank everybody at my gym, Spartan Fitness, my bro, Eric Anders, who's fighting this weekend. Y'all go check him out. Um, going to be a great fight, great card. Um, and anybody I forgot, you know who you are, man. I thank you. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you for having me on, bro.